Did you hear that? I, w there seems to be some miscommunication, so we are continuing. He's not going to stop the questioning until he's done, and then when he's done, we will ask our questions. Thank you. We're back on the record. Oh, Commissioner again. All right, so I think where we left off, um, again, I, seven, again, is a cleaner draft of six, and we don't need to revisit that in any event. But if we can uh, go over to Exhibit 8. And that's a one-page exhibit, Commissioner, you have in front of you? I do. And looking at the top, it's a uh, it's an email from uh, Rob Stoltzman dated Wednesday, March 31st. Yes. And again, to uh, Stokes, Hashaway, Saul. And I don't mean to be disrespectful by just syndicating their last names, but um, we have their full names. Um, agreed? Yes. In the first paragraph. Hello, all. I just got a call from Michael Corso. He told me that uh, his post meetings went well last night and that Gordon and Steve C. want to put the Moral Ob program in the FY10 supplemental budget, which currently might be heard as early as next week. Correct. That coincides with Sharon Reynolds calling me from the House Fiscal while I was at your office and leaving me a message that Steve C. said I'll have something for her. Parentheses. Well, she didn't say what or for supplemental. I've returned her call. Good news. Now, um, I know we talked earlier, and I asked you about any instructions that you gave Ms. Reynolds to call um, Stoltzman, and you have no recollection of that? Correct. Does this, does this particular email ref help refresh your recollection at all? No, it does not. What can you... Strike that. The first part of the email says he got a call from Mike Corso and that he had a meeting that went well last night and that Gordon, Steve, That's C. That's Rob Stoltzman got a call, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Rob Stoltzman got a call from Michael Corso. Corso is telling him, according to the email, that last night's meeting went well. Right. And that you and Steve, you and Gordon want to put the moral ob program, moral obligation program, in the FY10 supplemental budget. Yes. Now, as we sit here today and reading that, do you have any recollection of meeting with Michael Corso and Gordon Fox on or about March 30th to discuss the moral obligation program? No. Okay. So Stoltzman, again, is um, legal counsel, correct? Yes. Uh, to EDC. Let me ask you this, Commissioner, because um, there are at least some assumptions on my part that Steve C. means you. It is. Okay. Steve C., I assume, is, is me in this email. No, no other Steve C. Uh, in leadership that we can identify? I'm not sure, but. All right. So um, in referring to the third paragraph, again, um, skipping over the second one, of course, as a soft heads up, Michael said that he thinks there is some confusion and that he believes Gordon and Steve see this as a digital media industry program with 75 million of 125 million committed to 38 studios and the rest to be worked out on an industry-based program. Did I read that correctly, you Commissioner? Did. Now, did you have any discussions with Michael Corso and Gordon Fox um, about the entire $125 million relating to the digital media industry. Now, I, my recollection is what I said earlier, that the 125 would be for the entire business community. Whether it was digital media or anything else. Yes. And did you have any discussions or an understanding at the time that $75 million of the $125 million was going to be committed to 38 studios? Not committed. Um, so this is Stoltzman's writing. It's yes, not your yes. email. I understand that. Okay. And you have no recollection of any conversations with Michael Corso. 
about yeah. this. No. All right. So, in, in effect, Stoltzman saying that Corso's conveying or relaying certain information to him. Right. And either Stoltzman's lying or Corso's lying. Well, I don't know if lying's a strong word. Well, I mean, I if, mean there, if there was a meeting, As I read this, you know, that Steve C. So if Gordon said to somebody, Steve C. wants to do this or doesn't want to do this, or I've taught, it's, it's very interpretive. So, again, I'm not on this email. And I, all right. And I acknowledge it's, that. It's, you know, there's no sense of who was at this meeting. It's, it's you know, told me his post meeting meetings went well last night. I don't know what that means. And that Gordon and Steve C. want to put the moral ob program in the fiscal 10. Now, is it possible that I wanted to put this in the fiscal 10 supplemental budget, which it ended up? Exactly what happened. Right? Happened, okay. yes. All right, but to say it was, this was a conversation going on, I, I'm not sure you can lead to that uh, conclusion. Well, was it your understanding on March 31st of 2010 that $75 million was committed to 38 studios? Okay. Committed? No. Committed. I said that earlier. Was it discussed? Okay. I, March 30, on March 30th. I have always said, and I remain, that that legislation was an authorization, not a commitment. Okay. An authorization just authorizes EDC to do the program. There is no commitment in that legislation. No commitment in the legislation, but there were meetings at 38 Studios and made it, right? Yes. Okay, so there's, there's some meetings at least at some point in time with um, Sacanino and Gordon Fox at XO. There are meetings in this building every single day. I understand that, Commissioner, but we're talking that does about, not we're, mean but we're commitment. Talking, but we're talking about particular items. Right. Items which were, I was not at these meetings, as I've said, and quite frankly, all right. There are meetings in this building all the time with all le legislators. They meet with advocates. They meet with businesses. That doesn't mean they're committing things. I, I, I agree with you in some, in some respects, Commissioner, but um, it seems to indicate that you and the speaker saw this as a digital media industry program with $75 million of $125 million committed to 38 studios. So... Did you see it like that, or, or didn't you see it like I that? I did not see it like that. I saw it as so certainly they were, were – I saw that um, that this bill, and I'll say it again, was an authorization, which it is an authorization. They didn't have to spend one dollar of it, or they could have spent it all. Um, there was nothing committed in the legislation. Now, I am not part of meetings that EDC may have had or these type of meetings – all right, so, you know, the fact that I want to put it in the supplemental budget, that's the thing that happens all the time in our, in our what goes in the budget, what doesn't go in the budget. We have interpretation that this post-meeting meeting, that this post-meeting meeting was with you and Gordon Fox. Do you think that's a fair interpretation? No. Last paragraph. In the meantime, I'll draft a broad, open-ended one- 125 M, 125 million cushioner for review and ornaments or constraints as may be added by the powers that be. Rob, did I read that correctly? Yes, you did. So a broad open-ended $125 million cushioner, uh, of course, by its very nature, doesn't give any specifics, correct? I agree with that. It doesn't say who's going to get it. Yeah. It also says draft. It says draft. And, and, and the draft was ultimately approved. No, the draft wasn't approved. I added the protection standards in it. With amendments. With amendments. But ultimately, this, this guarantee, loan guarantee program was approved. Yes. In May. Sorry? In May. In May. But this is March 31st. Yes. And Stoltzman and Corso, at least, appear to be on the same page that... Um, 38 Studios is looking for $75 million. I'm not disagreeing with that. Okay. So there's no question that that's what they were looking for. Right? Right. All right. Now, if we can look at Exhibit 9, Commissioner, dated April 1st, which is the next day, 
And this is also from Stoltzman. And I think I may have just called him Stoltz, so I apologize. Rob Stoltzman to Sharon Reynolds. <clears throat> I ask you to look at the uh, first paragraph. It says, a draft memo from Keith Stokes to Governor Kachiri. I'm sorry, strike that. Hi, Sharon. Before the first, hi, Sharon. Following through on a discussion earlier today and discussions that have been occurring over the last several days, I'm attaching the following. A draft memo from Keith Stokes to Governor Kachiri, setting forth some background information, back, I'm sorry, background and summary information on 38 Studios transaction. This is a draft and has not yet been reviewed by the governor, but I wanted you and Chairman Constantino to have the benefit of the background portions of the discussions. I ask that you and the chairman refrain from circulating this memo beyond the leadership until the governor has indicated his review of it. Did I read that correctly? You did. Okay. So this is, my, this is April 1st. Correct. And this indicates, and again, this is not an email to you, but it's an email to uh, Sharon Reynolds. It says, say, uh, basically, Sharon, here's a draft memo for the governor. I want you and the chairman to review it. Do you recall? I do not. Getting, and I think that we, that's the same memo or draft that we looked at, which Earlier. was Exhibit 5. Yes. Okay. And you never saw that? No. So Sharon Reynolds is fiscal advisor to the Finance Committee, correct? Well, she was. I yes, she, she still is. is. And she's receiving information, important information, that is to be considered by the committee. Yes. And, and your, your recollection? I do not recall. You, you never got it. I, I didn't say that. I said I don't recall. This, this memo here? Number five. Number five. Let me look at number five which is also subsequently marked as number 10. Yes, I don't remember ever seeing this. Okay. If I, if I can just jump ahead from, we'll come back to nine, but if I can just jump ahead to uh, number 10 number for a 10? second. And it's the same memorandum that we talked about as exhibit number five, but now it has a date of April 1st, 2010. Do you see that? Nine is two pages, so... Uh, I had it. I don't remember seeing this. Sorry? I don't remember, you seeing, don't remember this. seeing this. So you may have seen it, but don't recall seeing it. I don't recall seeing do you it. Have any, uh, do you have any reason to believe, Commissioner, that Sharon Reynolds would not share with you something of such import? I have no reason to believe that. Um, if you had received such a draft, and you're not saying you didn't, but if you had received, received such a draft with a request um, from Stoltzman that it not be circulated, yes, uh, would you have abided by that? We were encouraged, and I can't tell you, again, I'm going to tell you this, I don't know the dates. We were encouraged not to talk about this. Similarly, as the Providence Journal was um, asked not to write a story. Who instructed you not to talk about it? I, it was EDC. Um, I, I remember EDC and the, and the speaker just, there was sensitivity about this deal that we were told that, um, and I don't know if that was the issue of other states being interested, but I think you, um, you see in a lot of these emails that there was a very sensitive negotiations going on and that we were encouraged not to talk about it. Now, I can't tell you particularly who said that to me, uh, but certainly... Uh, Stoltzman. Right, Stoltzman, and, and, that, and I consider Stoltz. that EDC. Right. You mentioned the speaker. Right. And, and was it because it was sensitive or, or did... And, and it's speculation, or, or was it because... They didn't want anybody to know that they were going to. That is speculation. Over I don't want to speculate. I don't want to speculate on that. But, you know, I'm not convinced. You know, but it's also speculation. If, like I said, there's a March 23rd journal article saying 38 Studios very interested in Rhode Island and EDC is talking to them. 
Very public. Yeah. Very public article. Very public, and I recall it from some of the depositions that uh, Kurt Schilling wasn't too happy about that. And that's right. That that's accurate, correct? Yeah, that's probably accurate, and I, I can see where there was a sense of... Um, and so, listen. And, and by the, listen, and by the me, way, Chairman, if I may interrupt, um, you, you gave, you provided me copies of uh, two of those articles. I think it's... Uh, same one, one's dated March 23rd, and and one's one dated March, March 24th. 24th. Yeah. So we, we just for clarification, we're going to mark these as a joint or, sure. or combined Exhibit 15. Yeah, Okay. I mean, I look at recent public, this happened this week, two weeks, the $56 million that this body passed. Well, Commissioner, I mean, you know, we're not we're not here discussing that. No, I know and, that, but I think. Know, but just to just put a, things. Just as in, just but as if in, you read that, they talk about the nature of not letting the names out of companies interested in business in in the programs. So I'm relating it to. I'm relating it to, the context by which, I don't want to speculate why the name wasn't. It's, but it may be for the same reason that this is going on. I don't know, but. Certainly. Well, hopefully they make go better than, than hopefully they make go better than seven uh, thirty eight studios did. You know, you know. There's no guarantees. No guarantees. But uh, with a again my term fledgling company and no product to be sold at that point in time. Did, did that concern you as a finance committee chair? I was very concerned, and as I said earlier, it's the reason why I wanted protections. I think. There were a lot of things that were not done properly after the legislation, and unfortunately it doesn't seem that much has been looked at in terms of that issue. Um, if we may look back again, Commissioner, to um, Exhibit 9. Paragraph 2, also attached to this email, indicates it's a draft letter of intent between the RID, RIEDC and 38 Studios. You see that? Did you say 10 or 9? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Looking at 9. 9. Looking at 9. I have it. And a draft letter of intent is attached. You agree with that, correct? Is that what it says? I'm asking you if you agree that's what it says. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. And that draft letter of intent now is marked as Exhibit 11, if you would. I have it. Okay. And would you agree, Commissioner, that without going over every comma and period and hyphen, um, that it's the same letter of intent that was originally dated March and struck through, then April's oh. put in, correct? Yes. All right. So again, in this... It does say draft on it, though. I'm s it says draft on it. I, okay. I thought I was very clear with that. Okay. I did say draft, right? But point is, this is April 1st, 2010, and Rob Stolzman is again um, submitting memos to the governor and draft letters of intent for a company that you just toured two days prior. Yes. Okay. And then paragraph three of the same email, meaning nine. He also attaches a draft Kushner. Yes. Authorizing EDC to create the job creation guarantee program. Agree with what I've read so far? Yes. Parentheses. Of which 38 studies, st 38 studios would be the first applicant. And I've read that correctly. Yes. So well, correct? Applicant. Applicant. That's what I said. Okay. So, again, this is April 1st. The legislation hasn't even been approved yet. You agree with that? 
I do agree with that. You agree with that these letters of intent in this draft, Kushner, are just that drafts? I agree. Okay. But for some, they've already agreed, apparently, and I think this is a fair interpretation, that 38 Studios was going to be the first applicant. Do you agree with that? I, it's, it's in this draft. So. Okay. So there's some, some discussion with 38 Studios, um, and it sort of, uh, I think, uh, supports my previous questions about whether or not 38 Studios, $75 million was committed to 38 Studios by these guys. Yeah. And, and you disagree with that still? No, I disagree that the legislature committed the money. EDC, all right? EDC is committing the money. I am not, I was not an employee of the EDC. I, I, and, and I know that. I know that. So, so well, but, but who are we you're talking about? Me, you're asking me to tell me, you're asking me about what another organization intent was. I'm asking you for fair interpretation of the documents that we're looking at. Between $75 million committed, according to the emails, looking at this email saying, hey, we don't even have this drafted yet, and 38 Studios is going to be the first applicant. So if you're asking me if it looks like EDC was committing the money, yeah. I would say yes. Right. If you're asking me if it looks like I was committing or the legislature was, I'd say no. All right. So let me, so let me ask you this. Let me follow up with that. EDC is committing the money. Okay. Let's, let's, let's go with that premise. EDC is committing the money, right? Yes? Based on these documents. Well, aren't there a lot of things that have to happen before the money is committed? Yes. But all right. Aren't, but this is aren't a, there things this is like... a preliminary question, Commissioner. Right. So, so... Well, it's very speculative. EDC saying they're going to be the first applicant. You agree with that? This is from Stoltzman. He's, yes. legal, he's legal counsel. Yes. He's taking his marching orders from Keith Stokes. Fair to say? I'm not going to comment on that. Okay. But. We have uh, the speaker who's in full support of this, right? Agree. Who's had at least one conversation with Kurt Schilling in your presence, right? Which was a meet and greet. Correct. Okay. We don't know what discussions they had on prior dates, if any. Correct? Correct. And we may never know. Is that fair to say? I don't know. But this wasn't all done in two days. The $75 million, they're going to be the first. They're going to, I think the I speaker said, supports it. I think I said earlier that it looked like a lot more activity was going on. Yeah. And you did say that. But the speaker supports it. The governor supports it. And they're drafting, they're drafting documents and letters of intent two days after you're there. And you don't think that's a fair interpretation, that this was a done deal? Really? Well, to me, a done deal is when you sign at the end of the, you right. know. So, so, so that's my, and my interpretation and, and of a you done know, deal. But you know the speaker right. wanted it done. I did, and I said that earlier. You know that. The governor wanted it governor done. The governor wanted it EDC done. wanted it done. The EDC wanted it done. And it's coming to your committee, and which was a, you know, you had a hearing. You put, the three people came in and said, hey, this is a great idea. In the past. Yes. Right? Now, it, by the way, I asked you earlier about an April 2nd email, and I believe it was exhibit, you have to give me a second. I've been speaking with Steve Constantino regarding the project, and he has been directed by the speaker to post the hearing next Tuesday. This is the April 2nd. You recall that one, right? It's Exhibit 2. Okay. Now, would you disagree with me if I told you that the following Tuesday was April 6th, having to check the calendar today? Okay? Okay. You don't... You, 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 no, no basis to disagree with that, no. correct? Would you agree, Commissioner, that, in fact, the hearing before the Finance Committee was held on April 6th? You looked at the, you looked yes. at the videos. Yes. So, and that's recent. So you've yes, got the dates. Yes, six. Right? Stokes comes in. Stoltzman comes in. 
Um, and Lori White. Yes. And I go, it's April 6th, it's four days later. This is a great program. There are no detractors. I can't plan or not plan that, but there were no detractors. You agree with that? I, I agree. Okay. And it passes committee. So it seems like EDC, the speaker, the governor perhaps, whoever, whoever wanted this to get done, it got done. And there was no way it, was, I, it I, wasn't passing. You agree with I'm that? Gonna, I'm not going to comment on that line. Um, there's no way it's not passing. Um, 66 to 1 vote on the House floor? Yes, I agree. Okay. Did, did, I think did, I think I said that earlier well, in the in in the testimony. Right. I agree. I know that. you did. I know you did. And and that's why I can that's why I can say it specifically. Yeah. Sixty six to one. The only one was Bob Watson, right? Yes. Okay. So and I recall that from the from the floor vote. So now, you've got um, a sixty six to one vote, and you've got at least in my interpretation of this, Speaker and Stokes at a minimum, right, knowing that $75 million is going to go to 38 studios. You disagree with that? No, I don't. But I do want to say one thing. It still is the responsibility of EDC to vet that proposal. And who was vetting EDC? Now, that's the risk, the assessment, the financial institutions. I just, I'm going back to the protections in the bill that were ignored. Um, Commissioner, just going back to my uh, question about uh, the hearing for Tuesday, April 6th. I know you agree that that was the date. Now having reviewed the depositions and such. But just to be thorough. Um, exhibit 13, and I'll come back to 12. First email is from, uh, we're on page one. Top email is from Rob Stoltzman to Sharon Reynolds. Yes. And then the next email is from Sharon Reynolds to Rob Stoltzman. And this is actually in response to Stoltzman's email of April 1. Um, Sharon Reynolds responds on April 2nd. Rob, the chairman has scheduled a hearing on the EDC issues to include this concept for Tuesday, April 6th at the rise. And just confirming that that's the, da that's the date that you had the Finance Committee hearing, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, Commissioner, looking at Exhibit 12, it's actually two documents. One's dated March 31, 2010. One's dated 4-1, 2010. Yes. And I, I really just uh, kept them together and made them one exhibit for purposes of uh, simplification, uh, expedite things. But would you agree so that those are copies of the resolutions? And we talked. We talked about. We talked about uh, the 331 draft earlier. And uh, those are the resolutions relating to the. Uh, RIEDC Job Creation Guarantee Program. No question about that, correct? Correct. And um, again, same terms on page two. It indicates that EDC was seeking a, a total in the aggregate of $125 million. Correct. Right. And again, dated April 2nd, you would agree, or do you agree? I'm sorry, April 2nd? I'm I, saying, do you agree 
that those, again, are consistent. If you look back at Exhibit 4, are those consistent with Rob Stoltzman's email from March 31st? I have to go back to 4. In which he uh, attaches a form of cushioner that authorizes the job creation guarantee program that we have been discussing. What is the question? I'm sorry. Um, Do you agree that Exhibit 12? Yes. And the contents therein, or, or the documents, I should say, are consistent with Rob Stoltzman's representations on March 31st, 2010, that he had attached a form of cushioner that authorizes a job creation guarantee program that the leadership in RIEDC have been discussing. It's the same one that we went over. Yes, it is. Exhibit 5. Yeah. Okay. And speaking of four, I don't know if we... I have to go back to that. This is not the first time this has happened. If I can go back to um, back to four for one second. Four? Yeah, please. The last paragraph, and I know we, we, we read part of it before, about Sharon Reynolds calling yes. on behalf of Chairman Constantino. We exchanged calls. I believe that's where I stopped. And again, this is Stoltzman writing to Stokes. So after, and we exchanged calls, it says... Because Mike Corso, the first line, says he wants to see the Kushner. So I imagine we will be under pressure to start circulating drafts tomorrow. <laughs> and, and that's a fair reading of what's on that last line, correct? So, and that's March 31st as well. Commissioner, if I can refer you, please, to page 48 of your deposition. 48? Please. Yes. And if you would, please, just read lines 1, just, just one, line. one through 10. To yourself, initially. Okay, I did it. So in, in that line of questioning, um, Commissioner, and I forget who's, at, who's doing the deposition at that point, but did you discuss that bill with any of the members of the House Finance Committee? And you answer, I don't remember. Question. At the time that the bill was pending before the House Finance Committee, you were aware of 38 studi Studios' request for $75 million. Is that correct? Their interest. Their interest. Is that correct? Answer, yes. So um, while it's pending, and you, and you answered this back in July of 2014, while it was pending before the committee, your committee, you knew that they were looking for $75 million? Yes. Okay. Did you... Deposition. Did you... 
I'm sorry? It's in my Jefferson. I knew they were interested in that. Yeah. Did you disclose that to the other committee members? I did not. Did you disclose that fact on the House floor? I did not, and I was not asked. And you were not asked, but... On it, the House floor. And also, does it relate back to the request for secrecy regarding this transaction? I think it re relates back to, I would not, um, to the fact that they encouraged me not to talk about 38 Studios. Yeah, right. It wasn't asked, but you didn't volunteer it. Right. Not to the committee members? Correct. 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 Not to the house floor? Right. Speaker knew it. Uh, yes. Eat Stokes knew. Right? Okay. Rob Stoltzman knew. Right. And the public knew it on March 23rd that uh, they were interested. Did they really, though? I don't know. Well, when no one's commenting, who knows what? So let me ask you this. Um, looking at Exhibit 14, who would? I put him away too soon. Surely the last one. You're, you're almost done with me. 14? 14. <laughs> yes. Well, that's 12. 14. It'll be the last page. Okay. Second to the last page. This is an email, Commissioner, from Rob Stoltzman, again to Keith Stokes, and... Um, some others, Melissa Chambers. Who is Melissa Chambers, by the way? I don't know. No recollection? No, no, no. Michael Saul, Fred Hashway, and that appears to be everybody, correct? Yes. And now, now, we're, now we're at June 16th, so we're going past the hearings. We're going past My the... birthday. <laughs> oh, sorry, Doc. I didn't mean to bring it up. <laughs> Can't take Doc's uh, thunder here. It's his, it's his day. But you agree it's uh, from Stoltzman. Again, you, no question, you're not included on it, correct? Correct. And, and we discussed a lot, or I asked a lot, about who we had discussions with, Stoltzman, Stokes. And Stoltzman writes, and again, if I read it incorrectly, let me know. Hi, all. I just got off the phone with Steve Constantino. He indicated that Larry Berman may be calling Fred on the same issue. Um, so the first part is Stoltzman. Um, do you recall having any conversation with Stoltzman on or about June 16th? I don't remember. I, I remember this issue, but I don't remember having a conversation with Stoltzman. Okay. Do you remember being interviewed by Andy Smith of yes. the Providence Journal? Yes, I do. And he's a longtime reporter. Yes. He's been, I don't know if he's still there, but he was there for years and years, correct? Yes. All right. And being in, in the House and the Finance Committee, um, you would know him or of him I know at him. a minimum. He didn't cover Finance Committee, but he covered certain issues. He covered but, certain issues yeah. up here, right? Um, Steve appears to have given a great interview, right on target with what you have been saying. This is not about one company. Now, this is Stoltzman writing in right. June of 2010. Um but about a knowledge-based industry, leveraging assets like a knowledge district, RISD, and other colleges. Uh, state government needs to be more proactive, especially in the economy with a 12% unemployment. Are these all things you said to That's generally, Andy Smith? I, I believe so. Okay. And did you also tell him that this was not a cooked deal for 38 no, studios? No, uh, th 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 when I saw this in the mail, and I did see this in the deposition, um, I was asked if it was a cooked deal. That's what, not my term. What was your response? Okay. I did not... I think more importantly, what was your response? Yeah, and, and this is how I felt about it, and, I, and I've said it here. Um, I believe we authorized the program. We didn't improve 38 studios. And my knowledge of this was simply that, that I was authorizing a, a program and that I expected the Economic Development Corporation and lenders to do the risk assessment, no matter who the applicants were. And I firmly believed in that. That's why I put what I put in the legislation. Um, you know, uh, 
Uh, I just wanted to make it clear that that Cook deal was not um, my term, because when you read this, it sounds like it's something I would say, and that was not my term. I don't know if you would have said that, use that term or not, but that's reading the email in Stoltzman's email. Yes. You agree? Okay. So if I can just jump down a little bit. Steve was not asked, and I know you were asked about this as well on your deposition. Yes. And he did not say whether he had visited the company, with the company. So he wants to know if the RIEDC has commented on his involvement. Do you recall that? No. What I do recall is I do recall telling them that, you know, a report is calling about the issue. Um, I went through, you know, uh, I think it says here uh, um, to Larry Berman. Uh, I told Larry that I got called by a reporter. Um, and pretty much that. I don't remember this part about the the meeting at the company. You don't remember being asked about it? Right. Well, you weren't asked about it. No, right, but I don't remember. You remember talking to Rob Stoltzman? About no, it? I don't remember the conversation. Would there be a reason, Commissioner, why you wouldn't want Andy Smith to know that you had a meeting at the company? Was there a reason? Yeah. Well, I think I gave the reason uh, earlier, is that we were, we were told that we couldn't talk about it. No, it's June. You know. Legislation's passed, right? Yes. Thirty Studios was getting their dough. There's no question about that, is there? They were getting the, getting sorry. their dough. Oh. They were getting the money. Okay. It's June. It, March has passed. April's passed. May has passed. The budget's been passed. I don't know when they finally signed the agreements, though, so... Um. They were, they, well, we know that they were in Rhode Island before the end of I understand that, but I, th I don't know when they finally closed the deal. I, I, and, I don't have that date in front of me. And, and unfortunately, I don't either, but at least as we know as far as today and what, what's going back and forth between Stoltzman and Stokes, these drafts are, are done and ready to go on March 31st and April 1st, right? Right, but it, all, they still have to close the deal, and the lenders have to close the deal. I, I, I mean, that's how it works. I mean, deal. it's a cook deal. You know, it was a cook deal with EDC. No, any question still, in your mind about that? It was a what? It was a cooked deal with EDC. I'm not, any, any, any I'm not going to comment on that. Those are not my terms, and I'm not going to use them. It was a done deal with EDC. Okay. Well, I think I, I think I gave you what I feel about EDC earlier. I, I understand. I understand. Um, Once the deal was closed, and I know we don't have the date. Yes, I don't. Okay. You have any more contact yeah. with Schilling, Saul, yeah. Stokes? No. Yeah. No, you're kind of still up here, but you know what I'm talking about about no, this about it, this it particular session, about this particular issue. Yeah. Session ends. So I I'm running for mayor. June. You're running for mayor. All right. You have. Other fish to fry, if not bigger fish to fry. Well, I didn't fry it very well, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, but good point, that's Commissioner. The but, point. <laughs> um, but any discussions with any of these people that we've discussed tonight about 38 Studios or this particular legislation? Oh. Do you recall? Yeah. Okay. At this point, I'm going to turn it over to the Chair. Um, at this point, unless something comes up, I have no further questions, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Okay. Would you mind staying in case other questions do come up? Sorry? Would you mind staying in case I other questions? I plan on staying. Thank you. Thank you. At this point, what I'd like to do is open it up to committee members for questioning, and um, because there were some of us that were present during these votes, I would like to start with those people first, and then the newer reps can go after that. Um, so I think it's right now our back three people over here. If I, if I may, Madam Chairman, just <clears throat> one thing. Because I referenced Mr. Constantino's um, deposition and for that page 48, I would just like to make that a copy of the uh, uh, Exhibit 16. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. You. Representative Corbesi, do you have anything that you'd like to? Okay. Representative Winfield? I have just a short question, Chairman. Nice tie. Um, 
When the legislation was passed out and the sponsor and the co-sponsors, how was that doled out? Do you remember that? Yes, very well. Can you tell me? <laughs> Love to. <laughs> so, it's not uncommon when there's legislation that the, the chairman automatically signs. So that's doling out it to myself. That was part of my responsibility. I feel bad for Representative Mello because I basically, he was next to me. I said, can you want to sign this? <laughs> and you know, you know how we sometimes do bills. Um, and then uh, that was uh, Representative Breen. So if you remember, and I'll, I'll try to make this as simple as I can. We had two debates on this. Article in the budget, supplemental in the bill. This goes over to the Senate, but the Senate, that year we were fighting over the budget between the rainy day fund and amortizing the pension system. So it's, that's kind of, but that's why they, it went back to us, supplemental budget. So that Article 7 that we had the debate on which had Representative Breen's procurement program in it, okay? Um, we then pull Article 7 out and make this bill that you are referencing. And um, so this program, which he was very supportive of, in fact, if you look at the, hearing, the, the floor debate, He's a little, he seems a little upset that his program's in the article and he kind of didn't get the credit for it. So the bill comes up. The speaker asks me, tells me that Representative Breen wants to be on the bill. And that's why I remember it so well because um, it's, I thought it was unusual. So it's a kind of strange request. I don't, you know, get that often. All right, so I go to Representative Breen, he signs the bill. Because that procurement piece, which is a part of, it comes in after the loan guarantee program, it's another EDC program, was his bill that passed, I think it was the year before, um, and he wanted credit, you know, he wanted to take some credit for it. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Representative Corvesi. Chairman, uh, Madam Chair, I had basically the same question as, as uh, Representative Winfield, which, I, which is why I, I uh, delegated, I delegated, I uh, um, had Representative Winfield ask the question we were discussing it earlier. I, I was going, uh, basically, let me just say that the attorney, uh, Dimitri, had asked a lot of the questions that I had wanted to pose, especially with regard to the time factor. Uh, Attorney Dimitri asked the questions, and Chairman Constantino, and you're still Chairman, uh, Chairman Constantino uh, um, uh, answered the question, so I have no further questions. Representative Serpa. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have no questions right now, but might we get a second chance to ask later on? Sure. Thank you. Going around. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Representative Slater. Are you, were you here for this, or was this when your father was here? Uh, this was my, probably my first year. My father had passed. So okay. Here, Do you have any questions? Similar to uh, what Representative Corvesi had said, uh, Attorney Dimitri uh, asked a lot of the questions that I would have had, so uh, I don't have anything at this time. I don't know if anything comes up later. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead, Vice Chair. No, I'll wait till the end. Okay, well, okay, thanks. He's deferring to you, so go ahead. <laughs> like I said, I'm one of those rookies that you referred to earlier. Um, I'm focused on Exhibit 14, and you, you, if you want to go to it, but this was not a cooked, the word, word cooked is in quotes, deal. Yes. And... I'm trying to understand what you mean by that term. Do you mean that? Oh, what I mean is I, that wasn't my term. Okay. The well, reporter you, asked me if it was a cook right. deal. And you said it's not. And so what I mean, you took a meaning, and is that, in your mind, that's because the, the company had been vetted by the EDC? 
No, what I mean by that is we were talking about the loan guarantee, the legislation. So at the, the context of that interview was that this, this law was specific to 38 studios. And in my mind, it wasn't. It was specific to the loan guarantee program of which we authorized EDC to go ahead with. So that word that they used, in your mind, it didn't apply because that was a general program right. that applied to many businesses. Exactly. Even though 75 million of that allotted amount, 125 yes. million, was allotted to one company. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Vice Chair. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner. And I do want to recognize that you, you have uh, traveled from Vermont to be here in front of us. And uh, uh, many of the people that you did ask and <coughs> express a hope that uh, they also appear. I, I've, I share the same uh, feeling as you. I wish more people were as forth, uh, right and forth with as you have been so far. Um, so with that, there has been a, a, a great degree of distinction probably from the beginning or at least since, since this came to oversight uh, between the loan guarantee program or the jobs guarantee program and the fact that 38 Studios was a deal brokered through EDC. And that distinction has been echoed throughout your testimony. It's very clear for those of us who have been involved with it and understand it. Um, you had uh, repeatedly throughout your, your testimony uh, reiterated that the legislature authorized it. The legislature did not broker this deal. This was done with EDC. Everything we've seen document-wise uh, from what we received from the court as well as our own document request backs, backs that up, and, and that is, in fact, the process. Um, so I, that, that has caused me to, to do some thinking as, as I've been listening to uh, your testimony and, of course, uh, having read the, the depositions as well. Um, you, uh, you spoke extensively ab about um, businesses, startups, other businesses uh, being lured to Rhode Island. Um, you spoke a lot about the atmosphere and the tremendous pressure at the time. And, of course, I recall that period of time, and it was uh, uh, economically just uh, crushing for the state. Um, I can certainly understand that there would be pressure for the legislature to act. Um, you stated that your responsibility as the chair is to create tools that the EDC needed and not really get into how it was used by EDC, which, again, goes back to them administering the loan guarantee. Uh, that never came before the legislature. But that all made me wonder, why would you have gone up to this company and, to use your word, why were they pitching something to you? You were the, the, the chairman of finance. You have the fiduciary responsibility of that position, which is a heavy, heavy uh, burden. And, and you made it very clear that you weren't. Uh, it, it was up to EDC to do the work of, of figuring out the companies. Why would this company or, or Speaker Fox, as we've, we, has been demonstrated, uh, who was so involved with it, why would anyone be, feel compelled, uh, and I'm, I'm not denigrating the position of finance chair, it's one of the most important positions in, in, in this uh, chamber, um, why would anyone feel the need to, to have to sell this to you? Because it was a new program. But, again, this is so, you going up to 38 right. studios. Why, are they, why do they have to sell you on 38 well, studios for the program? Yeah, it, I, it, I, you know, it was a, if anything, that was probably the worst example of a company they could pick because, well, as has been pointed out, they had no I, fruit to bear. I, I think I, I would, the people who I served with know that I'm probably the person they worried about the most, the stickler. The hawkish. Yeah. And... Um, I think my reputation over the years is, even when we disagreed uh, with each other, uh, I think you knew that most of the time I really, you know, looked at this stuff. And, and so I think they knew they had to, um, you know, they had to use the finance committee as the vehicle. It was a new program. Uh, so I think they wanted to showcase something, some 
company, first of all. I think that was part of it. The pitch was to showcase that there is a company out there that wants to come to Rhode Island to add so many jobs that we talked about earlier. Um, and it fit into their complete, they had gone through a reorganization the year before we passed legislation to reorganize them. They were under a lot of scrutiny. There was, I think, uh, in one of the articles, I think somebody mentions that Stephen wanted to get rid of us the year before. I think you probably read that somewhere. Um, it's not that I wanted to get rid of it, rid of EDC. I wanted to reorganize EDC because I didn't think it was, at the time, functioning. So I think they wanted to, you know, pitch a new company. This would be kind of the, you used the term anchor um, uh, earlier, but really to see this is the, the kind of gap in financing that's necessary. A company like this that's starting off, you know, it's in this digital high-tech arena. It's where Rhode Island has to convert from the manufacturing. I mean, you've heard these stories before. These are not new. Um, you put all that around the atmosphere that was going on in the state economically, I think that's why they asked me to go. Okay, so you could have stopped the bill as chairman. You, you, you oh, I don't know if I have that I've much power. I mean, I know, I listen, I haven't won every war sure. as chairman. There are some you win, some you lose. Okay. Um, but as I said, the governor wanted this, the speaker wanted this, EDC wanted this. Um, and that's very consistently displayed throughout all of these documents. They always so, include you. Know, you. Um, I'm not sure I could have stopped it. Sure. Okay. Um, now, this uh, this was taken out of the supplemental, and this this went through as a standalone. Yes. Was that because was there any concern that perhaps the fifty votes necessary on a on a on an appropriations bill like that would have not it, been detained? I mean, obviously the, no, the vote displaced it passed that the house. It wasn't even close, right? Uh, it already passed the house. The the budget or the supplemental budget passed the house, but this was pulled out. It was as pulled a out because the Senate sent it back. Okay, so that's what that was going to be my next question. Was the Senate apprehensive about no, the, the whole the budget uh, uh, that year? We had a huge current year deficit. The way the House wanted to solve the deficit versus the Senate wanted to solve the deficit was completely. We did not have agreement. So we decided to send the supplemental over. We decided to, it's funny, not a, neither one of these ideas are good. Um, we decided to re-amortize the pension fund, which gave us, uh, um, you know, start the clock over. So you have, your, your, your arc isn't as much, and so that you, um, which is your actuarially required contribution. And I'm getting a little off here, but that was our solving. The Senate wanted to use the rainy day fund. It was just a difference of, uh, of, of approaches, opinion. basically. You'd, right. You'd, you'd, okay. That, that's really uh, all I was okay. concerned about. Okay. So that's, that was the reason they sent it back. Okay. Um, so that's why it was, it was pulled out. That, that is not a huge deal. Um, did you at any point relative to the standalone bill and or the supplemental budget, did you personally engage in conversations with the Senate relative to it passing or was this just part of what the process is? It's just part of the okay. process. Okay. Um, did, now I know that this question has been, that has been asked before. I'm going to, I'm going to go back to that one. Um, have you been contacted by anyone revolving a crim, uh, involving a criminal investigation yes. involving 38 Studios? Yes. You have? I've been interviewed by the state police. Okay. Um, is that the only agency? Agency? Yes. Agency, governmental, yes, yes. or otherwise? Yes. All right. Um, no other public bodies, No, nothing else? It's only been the state police who have asked you? The state police and the uh, attorney general. Okay. Have you appeared uh, before any state or federal grand juries in connection yes. with 38 Studios? State. Attorney General. Attorney General. Voluntarily. I want to make that very I would clear. Expect that, yeah, no, no I, would, I would anticipate you've been very forthright. Um, no subpoena. So, all right, so we've, we've, seen the, we've all seen the tapes. I'm glad you did bring them. I wish we could have played them because they, I think that they do help paint a picture for people who weren't here, as, as I was not. So I had to kind of go back and, and watch this stuff. Um, there was a point when you were asked fairly point blank, has this been earmarked for any, any company? I, can you show it to me? 
uh, not having a DVD player, you, I can't. Because I went through it, and I don't say I was asked about an account. I think um, Representative Beth asked me about an account. Can you elaborate um, on the account? Because I don't. There know was that word. a question on whether the procurement program, the second part of this, mm -hmm. the John Breen part of this, of was for any programs. Okay. So that that wasn't splitting hairs. No, that's that's a totally different, completely different program. So you didn't understand so, the question to be was the loan no, job guarantee program? No, Representative Lima, I believe, asked the question, if that's if I remember it right, about the the jobs um, the procurement program. She even asked me if the certain companies testified. Um, that's what I believe it's about. Okay. It wasn't, and it's not splitting hairs. Those are two very, very distinct Understood. programs. I do too wish we could we could play the video because I think it well, would clarify can. the whole thing uh, for both of our recollections. Um, so with 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 the secrecy and and all of that, which was discussed, and and that's not my word, and that's your not not your word. I understand that. Um, there was there was a, a an effort as you articulated pretty clearly, that they didn't want this out. I mean, right. But like I said, and I know, I know it was kind of minimized. Yeah. All right, there are these articles. I, I, and I, I understand that. You know, I, I mean, I, I, listen, I, I truly, you know, uh, you know, and you've got the articles even, you're do, you know, doing it again with no, $56 no. million, dollars where currently nobody wants to release the names of companies interested in this new $56 million. It's actually the same issue, Understood. whether it's a moral lob or whether it's an appropriation. Money is money. Understood. Um, one of the things that you started off with, and I, I agree with, the, the respect and the dignity that this committee and the body truly deserves was something that, that you really want to keep intact, and I agree 100%. It, it, it ought throughout every step of the process. Do you feel you may have violated that at any point when you were kind of keeping <coughs> others in the dark on, on what was going on behind the scenes relative to 38 Studios? And I know that you have stated EDC did the, the lending, we did the authorizing, but you're a really smart guy and you knew what was going on. Do you feel like you misled your colleagues? No, I feel I was misled. You feel you were? Yes. By whom? I felt that the fact that they put pressure on people not to talk about this, the fact that they didn't follow what was in the legislation, the fact that there were, what I'm hearing through depositions, is that there were reports that were contrary to this being a good deal that they ignored. I feel I was misled. Okay. And I will tell you, it is a very difficult position to be in when you have... Uh, people of very high authority asking you not to say something because of the sensitivity, the $56 million, the sensitivity nature of all these deals. Um, I, I think it puts legislators in very difficult positions. I think it puts chairs in very difficult positions um, that is not fair to the legislature. Um, I think if there's a lot, somebody may ask me someday, what are your lessons learned on this? And I have a lot, but... Um, I, I just believe that. I believe my obligation was put forward a piece of legislation that I thought would be followed. With that, and I know you're referring to the stipulations relative to the financial monitoring agreement, which never happened. Um, it was initiated, but never happened. With that, is that your only regret? No, I think I regret. I mean, I, I really wish, you know, sometimes I wish somebody did ask me. You know, and we may disagree that it was asked, but I, I can tell you I wasn't asked. I defer right. back to the But chair. certainly um, I was thinking I was doing something for the benefit of the whole entire state uh, in terms of the protections and, and the economic development environment. You know, it was um, a very, very rough time. And I think we all know, those who are here knew what the condition of the state was. And, you know, quite frankly, it's speculative. This is a speculative uh, question. I'm not sure, other than the, maybe the Yankee fans, but um, even if, you know, if everybody knew it was for 38 Studios, I'm not sure it wouldn't have passed. 
All right. There is tends to be this, you know, admiration of sports figures and, you know, but that's, it may have even had more support. I'm going to, I'm going to just one more. And I know I deferred, uh, did you ever see the memo prepared by Rosemary Booth Gologly no. warning about this? No, I didn't. I don't. Th- so I feel that that would have probably dissuaded the General Assembly were that to get I just out. don't know when it was done. Okay. It was, it was. Because I think her- it was post. No, it was earlier. Well, it was, it was post. Uh, post bill. Post the bill. Yeah. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I, I, I will now defer back to the chair. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, and um, I'd like to thank uh, Steve for coming in tonight. Um, I suppose you told your, co- <coughs> your co-workers you were traveling south for, the, for a few days. But, yeah, it's uh, very warm here. <laughs> um, <clears throat> thank you again. But um, a couple of questions. In your own words, uh, you would agree that, for lack of better terminology, something went amiss in this whole process. I agree. Um, where would you say the main problem or problems lie in how we got to the point where we are now? And then when you answer that, I have another follow-up question. So first of all, you're all asked to make some really difficult judgments on some very complicated economic development deals. My first question I ask is the legislature have the kind of staff does it have the kind of staff to analyze these deals in a way that gives you some protection? You are, for all intents and purposes, a part-time legislature, and I know that's a word that you're really not. But you certainly, when you get a very complicated job development, and you've had a few of them since this, all right, do you have the internal expertise to really know right, that what you're passing makes sense and that it's not going to come back at you because you rely on the departments to do that kind of analysis. Think about that risk. All right. And listen, in 2008, every, nobody really, very few people could predict what happened in 2008. A couple did. And these are people embedded in this economy who know this like the back of their hand couldn't call that. Yet we, you, as elected officials, have to take on that responsibility in trying to judge whether these programs. You need to really figure out if you have the staff to analyze these and whether you need to add that staff. Second, what you put in legislation matters. So whatever you do this year, if you're doing oversight and you've got a program and you have protections in that, Make sure you follow that bill as your guide and say, call anybody in and say, are you following this like it's in the legislation? That's really where I see an oversight committee really, really, really forcing state government to be accountable. Um, that's so important. Moral ops. And I think if I regret anything to get to Rep Chippendales is this whole moral obligation. Now, we know the difference between a moral ob and a general ob. All right, moral ob, it's very simple. Moral, legal. General obligation is a legal obligation. Moral obligation is a moral obligation. And, I'm, and, and you hear that a moral ob, well, you're, you know, it's still backed by the, the state, but you're not obligated. But, as you know, the rating agencies punch you in the stomach if you default. So you're kind of obligated in an indirect way. Moral obs are very dangerous. So if I regret my history in this issue, I've always fought moral obs, but because of this situation that year, I, I think moral obs should be scrutinized. And you know, states will say, well, we need vehicles because there are things we have to do. But moral obs for economic development, I don't know, if you need to build a, a training school or a prison, you usually go to the people, but sometimes you have to build something and you use a cushioner to do it. Um, I think you should be very, very diligent 
in, in how you use a moral obligation bond. You th I think you know how I feel about tax credits. Um, my, my history in this, this building is proof of that. Um, they are seen as great things, but remember the amount of revenue you're giving up when you do that, and unless you get it back in wages and taxes and other forms, you're losing revenue for some of the most important programs that you care about. All right, so I can go on and on on, on where I think the lessons learned and what you can do in the future, but that would be my suggestion. I have a, a follow-up question to that. <clears throat> and Chairman, take as much time as you want answering this question. Um, in your own words again, would you say there were any person or persons um, that had or developed some criminal intent in the in this dusty road that 38 Studios brought us to? <clears throat> so, or acts, was there anyone who had uh, uh, some type of uh, corrupt or ill intent? I can't answer that fully. Any of this? I can only talk about myself. And, and I'm, you don't even, if you can no, go as far gonna, as, as you want, you don't even have to answer yeah, name, I, names. I don't you know, know what criminal intent, you know, if there was or not. I, I'd rather not comment on that. I know that in terms of financial gain, I had no financial gain. I thought I was doing something to benefit the state of Rhode Island in terms of putting forth a program that was being asked for by the Speaker, the Governor, and the Economic Development Corporation. So your answer is not so much no, but I don't know. I don't know. I think it's evidently clear that you certainly don't no. have any. I mean, your willingness no, I, to come here and as openly as as open as you've been, there's no question about that. But I'm just asking in general, you you're not comfortable saying no, but yeah. you don't know. I am not privy to any criminal intent. So right. Thank you very much. Further questions by anyone on the committee? Okay, I'd like to ask some questions. Um, you began with your statement, which I um, allowed you to read the, the entire thing, and you mentioned that a letter was sent to you and that um, legal counsel had suggested that you not do it because there was a lawsuit going on. Yes. The lawsuit's still going on. I know. Um, we weren't reached out to on the committee. I wasn't, as far as I know. The speaker wasn't that you were willing to come down now, um, which was the reason for the subpoena. However, you've come willingly, even though the lawsuit's still going on. What's changed? Well, what's changed is this. Um, I know the lawsuit is still going on, and I'm not sure that'll ever get settled. Uh, but um, many advised me not to come, Representative. I want to make that very clear. Um, and if I had to add up who asked me to come versus, versus advice, um, most said don't come. If you notice, no one's sitting next to me. Um, I am a public official. Um, I served in this body. So I felt, and that's what that letter was. I mean, remember during the letter, that was kind of the beginning of the lawsuit. You know, I was, it was the advice I got. Um, and, you know, I don't know if you've ever been party of a lawsuit or, you know, you get this advice and you trust in your legal counsels, you know. And I still trust in my legal counsel. Um, uh, but I felt that it was my obligation to tell my story. Uh, the depositions came out. And the thing about depositions, it's like reading text messages and trying to figure out what it's all about, you know. They're, I don't have the advantage of knowing what Keith Stokes' deposition said while I'm doing my deposition. I don't have the advantage of what Michael Saul's deposition is while I'm doing mine. Um, so I thought it would be best to kind of know that, right, to know what the whole scene was also before I came before your committee. Um, I didn't have the advantage of knowing all of that. If I had come back then, I wouldn't know what was in any of those depositions. So I actually think this would, have, this would have been more beneficial. The timing of this actually is better. Um, and it gave me a sense. And maybe it would have jogged my memory. You know, I don't like saying I don't recall, but I'm not going to lie in a, in a proceeding either. Um, uh, I think you all know how hectic 
that job is when you're fight house finance chair. Um, I couldn't remember meetings three days ago, uh, but certainly uh, that's the rationale. Okay, and you mentioned that um, our current speaker reached out to you. Um, did he personally call you? Um, did you speak with him about coming here? No, basically, uh, I think he talked to my brother Gregory and said, you, you're being subpoenaed. Okay. Well, that's how I understood it after it happened. So yeah. thank you for answering that. But I appreciate that. Okay. And um, just to skip forward, you were talking about John Brien's bill was the bill in which I questioned if there was any entity that um, was being considered for the money. Um, and I'll go back and I will review those. Please, um, please after review this. it. Um, however, Charlene Lima also brought up on the floor about companies. Um, she named two specific ones, but at that point you didn't feel it was necessary to divulge 38 Studios or talk about it? She then? was, again, talking specific, represent, uh, Chairwoman, um, about um, the procurement program. She listed all those. Th during the hearing, following that hearing, there was the, it continued after the loan guarantee program. There was a hearing on the procurement program. A bunch of companies came in. She was referencing those companies on the procurement bill, um, not the loan guarantee bill. Okay, I guess as the, the term was splitting hairs and you don't see No, it, it's but not splitting hairs. There are two distinct programs. We amended that. Remember, we put his program into the bill. All right, we had a hearing. She had a concern about that program in specific, and the company she mentioned were the ones that testified for the procurement bill, not the loan guarantee bill. I think but they it, all became one. No, no. When John Brian's language was put oh, in. Oh, in the bill, yes. 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 Okay. I'm sorry. Thank you. And I'm going to jump around. Um, but you've made us aware, and we know th from some of the depositions, that Sharon Reynolds and Bob Carr were aware, and they were working on a 38 Studios. What about others? They staff? were aware of the loan guarantee program. Right. Not, they weren't aware of 38 I, I, Studios? I'm not sure. Even with the emails with Sharon Reynolds? Well, I remember I don't – I'm not sure they know. You're asking me that, so. Okay. Um, did you – were you ever in a meeting um, where Frank Anzavino was present – when there was a discussion of 38 Studios? No. No. Okay. Um, in your deposition, and I'll just um, refer back, it was page 82, um, and it was asking who may um, be aware of it. And I don't, do you have a copy of the deposition? Yeah, page 82. And it talks about um, Whip Peter Kilmartin at the time. And since he was part of leadership, are you aware, or I guess the first question, are you aware um, if Peter Kilmartin, now that he is our attorney general, was aware of anything um, having to do with 38 Studios? I'm trying to find out. What line? Can you tell me the line that's Well, on? I'm just, he's mentioned um, on page um, Is it 82? 82. 82. I thought I said the House Whip. There was a majority whip as well. It's two positions, and it talks about their responsibility. Yeah, I got it. I have um, it now. Okay. Well, the question is, are you aware if Peter Kilmartin um, knew about 38 Studios before or during our vote? I'm not aware of that at all. Okay. No. Did you ever have any meetings that he was present that no. you remember? No. No. What about our current speaker, uh, Nicholas Mattiello? I do not. I'm not aware of any of those okay. meetings. Okay. Um, in your testimony tonight, I guess I was confused about the $50 million because originally there was intent of $50 million and then it going to $125. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Whoever else has their mic on, if you could turn it off. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we know who. Um, and you had said you weren't aware of where $50 million came from, but... Are you aware of it now, or are you still Well, what, I, what never... I mean by that is the way it has been described, and maybe this is press, so I, I apologize if I'm not stating this right, is that, that there was a bill that for $50 million, or an article for $50 million, and that the legislature amended it to become 125 
So I've asked the question, where's this, like, I mean, I know years passed in some hearings, they've asked for 50 million for this and that, but I don't know where the 50, where, you know, they may have, you know, thought originally the program should be 50, but I don't know where that is. I don't know where that original 50 originated from. That's what I mean. Um, it's like, you know, I, you know, I didn't see a bill that said 50. I didn't see an article that said 50. I didn't see a memo that said 50. I didn't see anything that said 50 originally. Um, you know, I didn't see an email. I didn't see anything in here that, that talks about, like, we're putting this bill in for $50 million, you know. And, and um, that's what I mean by that, uh, Chairwoman. Um, but, you know, give them that. If, you know, I'm even willing to say, you know, maybe it was just a proposal that they talked about, you know, um, $50 million. But I certainly don't ever remember seeing an actual piece of legislation or a document that, that you know, the proposal is for $50 million. Okay. Within the deposition that you gave, um, on page 37, um, just again, it, it references that $50 million. Yes. Um, it, and again, at that point, too, you weren't aware of why they were asking on $50 million? And it's at the bottom. It says, do you recall ever telling Mr. Stokes that in order to accommodate the request of 38 studios, a proposed $50 million program could be increased to $125 million? What I remember is this, and I, I said it earlier, is the question I asked was, to meet the entire business need, what do you need? Because I was concerned, my thought process was concerned that this was going to go to one company and all the money, and I was not supportive of that. But at that time, were you aware that 38 Studios wanted $75 million? Well, I was there. I was at Maynot. Right? That I, was, I knew that they were interested in, I think, a significant amount. I wasn't sure it was going to end up at 75, but I knew it was a, a big amount. You know, and I think, I, I think of, you know, um, I don't remember the, the number 75 being explicitly said. In listening to your testimony tonight, I'm going to ask the question, did you ever raise concerns to anybody? The Speaker, Sharon, Stokes, the Governor, that you didn't agree with the 38 Studios before we took the vote? Um, what I will tell you this is that I was concerned and I always have been concerned that the Economic Development Corporation couldn't handle these type of programs. I think that I've said it publicly. I've said it many times. That's what I was really concerned. I thought putting these protections would protect us. Um, and, um, you know, that's, that's pretty much what I, what I felt. I, I, um, again, there was so much pressure to do something. Did you voice yeah. it to anybody, though? Um, I don't recall if I voiced it to anybody. I mean, I know I was consistent in saying that. I know I always, you know, I, I want protections in these bills. I know I said that to, to everybody. Um, I did say that. I mean, I could, I probably said that to the speaker. I want protections in the bill. I want to protect ourselves. Um, protections were put in the bill, as I said to Representative Planjo. Um, what we put in these bills matter. We have to make sure that the administration makes sure that it matters. Did anyone raise concerns to you? No, I didn't get much opposition to this. I know it was a select few at this point that knew yeah, anything. But, but even, you know, I thought at the hearing, to be honest with you, that some people would come out, some professional kind of economic development types would come out against the, the 125. Because there was a range. I mean, it, it, it didn't, you know, it didn't cap it. It could have gone to a large company, small companies. And there was no opposition. In fact, there was even time for more opposition. Because remember, it didn't, it came back. So you had another, we had another, you know, debate on the House floor during the, in May. And it still didn't have much opposition. You know, and by that time, people did know about 38 Studios, you know. Okay, um, I have quite a few more questions. Um, Earhart's amendment, 
Um, and I'll, I'll go back and I'll ask you if you recall which, something. Which one? Um, the one that was going to cap it. At, I believe it was $15 million. It wasn't offered. All right. Okay. okay. Um, a couple things happened. First of all, I had called in and asked for an amendment to be drafted also to put a cap on it. And um, were you aware of that? I do. I was not. Okay. And I was um, told that there was no need for it, um, that Earhart was going to offer his. Were you aware that Earhart had an amendment? Um, I heard he had an amendment that he was going to offer a cap. Okay. Were you aware that somebody or anybody was going to speak to him um, no. before or no. during the vote? I was expecting to have the debate, actually. You were expecting yeah. to have the debate on it. Okay. And what would have you tried to shoot the debate down if it had come to cap it? I don't know. That would be speculative. I know it is. I know. But it's I, how you I don't know. If for, I don't know what I would have done, actually. Okay. You know. Now, you, you've talked about that you've had concerns with moral obligations and that you felt pressure. Um, and certainly we can all look back on times on the House floor where we felt pressure and we make decisions based on that. Um, I'm not asking you to look back, but at that point in time, um, whether the pressure came from leadership or EDC, and I'm kind of phrasing this as a statement, but you can correct me, you consciously made the decision not to talk about it on the House floor, not to talk about it during the debate. Is that true? I'm going to tell you my thought process, and this is why I know I wasn't asked the question. Because I said to myself, if I'm asked the question, I'm not going to lie. But at no point did you feel that you should offer I, the I was I was honoring, like I said, the pressure of them trying to keep this deal, um, you know, confidential because of the nature of their negotiations. We were told that other states were looking at 38 studios. We were told things like that. Um, and that that was why we couldn't talk about it. You saw the pressure just on the Providence Journal not to write a story about it. Um, it's, that was the environment. You talk about having met um, Mike Corso in general, and um, have you ever been to Mike Corso's office? I was there once. Okay, for what? If I may ask. You may ask. Um, they dropped Kurt Schilling off. So when I saw him at the restaurant, right, they dropped him off there. And you were there? Yes, I just dropped off, left. No meeting, if that's what you're saying. And you were at Mike Corso's office. May, can you describe exactly? Because I, I it you. was so. It was thirty seconds. Dropped Mike. Um, I'm sorry, Kurt Schilling at his office, and I left. And did you go into the office? Yes, just went in, opened the door. He he went in. I left. Who else was present? Uh, the speaker. <laughs> so there were four people. There was Mike Corso, the speaker. Schilling and yourself? Yes. And you dropped and ran or dropped and left? Yes. Okay. And <laughs> the three other people stayed? I don't know. I don't remember after that who stayed. Okay. Is there a reason that you left? No, I just, it was, actually, I think, I don't remember. Somebody, I, I went with, I don't know if it was this, I don't remember. I just know we dropped him off and I left. I don't remember who stayed or who went. Do you remember the time frame of when that happened? No, I think that was after the, the, the dinner I said at Vendor. Um, and I think it might have been post, you know, don't, I don't remember the exact date. And I think I say that in my depositions. Okay. Given that this is um, very public and certainly we are looking for answers for the public, I am going to ask you a couple questions. Um, did you benefit financially no. from this at all? No. Are you aware of anybody that held a leadership position or was in the House 
or serving as a elected official that um, financially benefited from this? No. Just going through my notes because I have some from other people too. Um, one of the questions of one of the representatives that had to to leave was that during um, the debate that um, you were asked about the loan amounts um, and it being that we were going to give small loan amounts. Do you remember that? Or is that referring back to also what you were saying with the Brian bill? No, I remember having a discussion that the loan amounts were small and large. So it wasn't a surprise to you with the $75 million? No. And they could have gone They higher. actually testified to that in, in committee as well. Okay. So in committee, Rob Stoltzman, I believe, states, or, or it might have been Keith, I'm sorry, uh, that the loans could be, uh, and I mentioned this earlier, 100,000 to millions. Right now I was just talking specifically to the floor, if you remember right. being half million, million, five million, 15 million. Yeah, yeah. During the testimony tonight, um, when it was going back and forth, and I didn't want to interrupt at the time, you had said, I was against that. And it was when the questioning of giving the $75 million to 38 studios. And I just, I don't want to put words into your mouth, but were you against giving $75 million to 38 studios? I was against giving one company all the money. That's why I went to 125. To make sure that there was something beyond 38 so that studios. Other, so that, uh, yes, so that other businesses could partake in the program. I guess because we are trying to, to learn from this, and this will be my last uh, question if anybody else has something. You, you talk, oh, we do have some more questions, okay. You, you talk about the pressure that you felt, and I know it's hindsight, um, but we are trying to, to move forward with this. Um, given the mistakes that were made, you, you saw what was going on, you saw behind the scenes the, the 75 million. Even though you reference an article in the journal, you understand it's a part-time legislature, that there are articles in the paper. It may have got missed. I can tell you, I was there for the vote. I don't remember it ever coming up. Um, and my gut still today is if the House floor knew about that $75 million already being allocated, it wouldn't have passed. And we may disagree with that. I'm not saying you're wrong. I just but, said you don't know. That's what I said. I said, I don't know if it would have passed. But looking forward, uh, ahead, um, in the pressure you, you felt, and I guess, as you know, um, and we sat near each other. <laughs> I, <laughs> For a long time. <laughs> um, the first Democrat to vote no on a budget by myself. I, I remember feeling pressure. I remember being told things, but I didn't do it. And I guess you, you felt pressure. And you felt like you were doing right by leadership and you were trying to put things into place. But, and this is hindsight, would you stand up this time and tell us? Would I stand up and tell you? If I, yeah, absolutely. I think we need a lot more transparency in these economic development de uh, deals. Um, and I think the other pressure I was talking about was. And that's something you can't replicate. You can't replicate the economic pressure we were under as a state at that point in time. Um, who wanted to blow up EDC? Who wanted to make it better? Who wanted to reorganize it? We were gasping for air to do something. I think that pressure, too, was not only the pressure of, you know, the governor wanting it, the speaker wanting it, EDC wanting it, 
but you had the overall economic pressure. And I think sometimes we react um, to those things because we think we can, like, have this light switch and turn this economy around. These economies don't turn around by light switches. They turn around. It's a long-term solution that has to be dealt with, and it's not just economic development deals. It's tax policy. It's education policy. It's health care policy. So um, uh, I do believe that, you know, if I were in that position again, absolutely. But, again, it's hindsight. Right. I know it is hindsight, but I'm trying to look what we can do different in the future and legislatively. You, you talk about now this other $56 million. Um, is there a way that we can legislatively uh, dictate that these meetings don't happen? And if I they, think, I, you know, they all say that these deals need to be kind of confidential, secret because of the negotiating, and maybe there's some proprietary. But certainly, um, you know, you, you write the laws. You know, you got to balance that with whether that interferes with the economic development the corporation's ability to do their business, right? Is this going to stop companies by having transparency? Is this going to stop companies from applying, you know? That's the balance you have to make and decide which, which – you have to decide which – where you want to – all right. But, you know, quite frankly, I think your tax policy is a much better vehicle. Broad tax policy is a much better vehicle in, in, in getting companies to a state than these one-shot deals. Thank you. There are other questions? Representative? First of all, Commissioner, I'd like to thank you for coming in today. Uh, unlike other people, you have the, the guts to come here and answer the questions that we want answered, and I really appreciate that. But first of all, I just want to summarize some of your things, some of the answers. Uh, the governor and the governor's office was 100 percent in favor of this bill. Is that correct? That was my understanding. Is that – and uh, – are you aware of the governor applying pressure on the EDC in any way? That I, I, I don't know. Did he apply pressure on the House in any way? I don't know that. Thank you very much. Okay. Representative? Commissioner, uh, pretty much a similar topic. Uh, and I'll preface by uh, saying that I've reviewed a lot of the evidence in this matter. Uh, much like yourself, there's absolutely no evidence that you benefited from this. It, it, it backs up your testimony on it. Uh, while there is evidence that others did significantly financially benefit, and they were going to benefit whether this was a good deal or a bad deal. In fact, they benefited uh, before the economic impact was uh, going to be felt by Rhode Island. Um, so with that as, as my preface, uh, you, you've testified that uh, you were not told at any point that Massachusetts had rejected 38 studios. And you also testified that you were told that other states were interested in 38 studios. And so I'm going to ask four very succinct and specific questions. Sure. Were you told that uh, this is all has to do with, that, with the idea that somebody else, some other state was interested? Were you told that by somebody from the Senate? No. Were you told that by somebody from the House? No. Were you told that from, by, uh, from, uh, by somebody from the governor's office? No. Were you told that by somebody from the EDC? That's where I believe I was told it from, that they gave me the kind of sense that other states were, and they again, were talking to other states. And you've testified kind earlier. Kind of general, general, though. Not, okay. I don't know what the specific states were. Testified earlier that you don't recall specifically who told you that. Right. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I mean, one of the things, just in terms of your your, your question, um, um, getting back to one of the things you could do is maybe do find out, you know, have other states rejected new proposals. You know, that, um, getting back to the chair's uh, question, um, I thought I thought about that as well. That um, maybe part of the vetting process that. 
they kind of have to find out if they've been rejected by any other states on the same proposals. And what Part of the vetting process when you're buying private things like insurance. Yes. Yeah. Good point. Thank you. Uh, Representative? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Commissioner, I'd like to thank you for uh, traveling here and being as, as forthright as uh, you could possibly do. I did have a lot of thoughts and questions on my way for the last couple of months, but um, they've been answered. Um, they've been spelled out in detail between the lawyer, between yourself, so I, I appreciate that. Um, one, one question I did have, and it just came to mind after my colleague had asked about uh, who had benefited. Um, did you know specifically through the process if anyone was going to benefit? No, I mean other than the company, but you know, you know uh, the company. But did right. you know of any brokers or anything to that effect no. that were going to benefit from this? No. no. Thank you. That's all. Thank you, Vice Chair. I have two questions. One, one just popped up after that. Um, you stated that uh, Michael Corso was familiar to you because he was a, a, a tax credit broker. Yes. I mean that's what everyone yes. knew him for. He helped write the law, etc. Why would Michael Corso have been so embedded in this, in, in your opinion? And that's all I'm asking. Because you saw him pretty much from the beginning. Whether it was at meetings or at fundraisers or where have you, he was very much involved. He was at the dinners. He was at these, these gatherings of, of folks from 38 Studios. Wouldn't he have been financially gaining by using, But I don't know that. But his business is... is Tax so, credits, yes, but right? So no. why, why else would he be there unless he was involved in somehow administering yeah. tax credits? I, I can't answer that. I'm, Michael, I'm sorry. Rep, That's fine. I, <laughs> um, I thought I was in Vermont. They, That's okay. They, I they get Michael upset when anyway. I use their titles. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, representative, uh, I wish I could answer that question. Okay. Um, I didn't know. It was, you know, okay. I didn't know the relationship. All right, so the two questions that popped into my mind earlier while other folks were asking questions is, and they're kind of subtle, but really they stand out when I look at them. Why only three sponsors, I'm asking myself? So, uh, you know, I'm a legislator. We write laws. You said it. I'm from a caucus of 12. <laughs> we have a bill that we love and we want it passed. We really take care and concern that the top five people on that bill get the, get the billing and the credit. Right. Here's a bill that, from everything we've heard, is, I, and I'm going to use a corny term, the greatest thing since sliced bread, and it's going to get Rhode Island back on its feet. We have to move urgently. I mean, we went from one day having a meeting to another day having a pro forma to another I, day having a bill. Next thing it's on the floor. I was, people. All of a sudden, why aren't we giving credit? I mean, don't, listen, don't, don't I, we want to give credit to other I people? Know. I know. I was not well, why to, aren't there, why are there I don't, I don't want to say that I wasn't a person who didn't want to give credit, but I wasn't one of those legislators that went around. That's why I know the Breen story so well. I wasn't one of those legislators that went around getting signatures on my bills. I understand and I saw that. this, and I, and that's just the way I, I always was. Um, so, uh, and I saw this as a um, kind of a formality. It was an article of the, you know, it was, we were pulling the article. They had passed it. it was, remember, it was an article in the budget. Yeah. All right. It wasn't a sponsorship. Passes. So we just pull that article out when it comes back and make a bill out of it. So I saw it more as a formality. That's why I was upset. I even asked Representative Mello to sign it. I mean, <laughs> um, I, it was just, I'll buy that. Okay. You know. Uh, um, the other thing was, now you've expressed repeatedly your concerns about EDC over the years, and, and I, I'm not going to quarrel with anything you said regarding that. You also stated that you were very concerned that a big chunk of this was going to go to one company, and you yeah. were not in favor of that at all. Right. And why were you prepared to argue against the Earhart Amendment to limit it? I, I said you stated I, you were. No, I said I didn't know if I would or not. Oh, you, no, you stated very clearly no, that you no. were prepared to argue the Earhart Amendment. No. I no. believe. Debate, yes, debate uh, the Earhart I said I was prepared to debate it. Yes, exactly. Right. Why would you have debated it? If, if you felt so passionately about capping it or that it should only be, here's a mechanism that would get you what you want. Why would you have been ready to debate that? Why wouldn't you? Because I just figured that what I mean by debate is I, uh, it's part of being chair. You're the, <coughs> one of your responsibility is to, um, you know, whenever there is an amendment, all right, you expect the debate. And 
uh, I don't know what I think I said. I wouldn't know. I don't know what I would have done at that time. I expect I prepare for debate. I prepare every amendment. I prepare debate. Uh, you know, um, it's just what you do as House Finance Chair. So when you're doing the budget, you know there's well, not like they used to be there. One time there was like 120 amendments to the budget. Still are. Most of them don't get put in. All right. No, but in, in the early days, they got put in. <laughs> okay. And I had to prepare myself on every single article in every single amendment to expect a debate. Now, I don't, some we supported, some we didn't support. You know, we don't know. But uh, as the chairman, as the floor manager, I have to be prepared for the debate. Okay, so you were just doing your job. You weren't necessarily right. opposed to the Earhart Amendment, right? I okay. You know, I was, and by the way, I didn't. It never came up, so I didn't. Understood. Thank you very much. Yes, question, representative. Thank you, Madam Chair. Quick comment. <clears throat> you know, uh, after listening to your testimony, and I've, I've heard all of it, and the and the questions by our attorney. It seems to me that the EDC was kind of acting like a habitual gambler that kept on losing, and the more they lost, the crazier their bets would get. Because it just seems like, I mean, it, 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 it seemed like that the EDC was just, it was like a Hail Mary pass, let's keep our fingers crossed and run with it as fast as we can and kind of run roughshod over everyone. Does, does that sound somewhat correct in your in your opinion? I mean, I, I'm just listening, looking at these emails and and letters. It just seems like Stokes was uh, was jonesing for something big time. Well, I think again, I think everybody was hoping it. And I think I used the Kennedy quote, and that's if this had been successful, there would have been people lining up, so, you know, and, and bragging about why they supported it. You know, it's. Um, I think there was just a lot of pressure on all ends, and uh, I just think there's real good stuff you can do in oversight on the future of how the economic deals are made. Um, I think you have a lot of potential there, um, and I think you need to keep a cautious eye because, you know, alpha beta happens whenever. Yeah. But, you know, something happens every 10 or 12 years, it seems, some biggie, you know. So this can happen again. Um, and whether the deals are small, 10 small deals can go south if you're doing 100 of them, you know. Um, so that, that fits in the law of averages. You know. If it, 10 deals go wrong in I 100, mean, And, you know, uh, you, you've read about some of these deals in Massachusetts, much bigger than 38 studios that, that have gone south. There's been many in New York, New Jersey. There's a lot of risk in this business. It's, it's like the gaming business. There is a lot of risk, but um, uh, the gambling business. Um, but uh, you need to put some, at least as many safeguards as you can. It's never going to be 100% proof. You're dealing with economies. You're dealing with, you know, risks. You know, this whole new world we're in, which isn't manufacturing anymore. So there's a lot of, lot of risk in these these endeavors. But I think you said it quite eloquently yourself. If you know, if you have a bushel of apples and you have a couple of bad apples, you expect it. But if you have one huge apple and that one huge apple goes bad, you know, we're in the predicament yeah. we're in now. Thank you again. Are there any further questions? I'd like to thank you for coming. Under thank you very much, and I, I hope this has been helpful. Thank you. Can I have a motion to, oh, we have one more thing on the agenda, and um, that's just discussion of uh, future agenda and meeting dates. Um, at this point, um, I know that we are going to open up the committee to public testimony. I don't have a date for that. Um, we are going to open this committee up to public testimony. Um, so... Um, I will get back to you on future dates for that and then where we're going from here. Thank you. Second? Seconded. We're adjourned. Thank you.